Good morning and welcome, everyone. We continue with our opening sentences for Epiphany. <clears throat> Rise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all who live in this world. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The utterance from my heart will give understanding. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. I will praise you, O Lord my God. With all my heart, I will glorify your name forever. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is from the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from prisons, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you them. This is the word of the Lord. The reading is from Romans 6, chapter 1. I'm sorry, yeah, Romans 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by, by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like the, his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to us, once for all. But he lives, and he lives in God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin 
and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated, please. I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing? All right. You guys all excited to go with the snow and cruddy weather and all that? Yeah? Going to go sledding today? No? No? Well... You just never know about these things. Uh, Doing this sermon series on baptism, and I want to talk this morning a little bit about the font. At least that's what we call it, a baptismal font. That word font, F-O-N-T, comes from the word fountain. You guys know what a fountain is, right? So tell me, what is a fountain? It's a water thing. It's where you go and get a drink of water. Or you can go to a park and you will see decorative fountains uh, that will have water that flows down. They're really kind of pretty. So it is a place where there is flowing water. Well, that's part of what the idea here is with a fountain. That, that we use. And now when we put water in there, it doesn't exactly flow, but we get this idea, we remember Jesus' baptism. And that was one of our readings today. Jesus, where did Jesus go for his baptism? Did anybody catch that in the readings? Where did he go? He went to John the Baptist, and where did he find John the Baptist? The Jordan River. Yes, he went there to be baptized. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit in the sermon, but what I want to talk about here with the font is the gifts that you receive in baptism. There's a couple. One is that you receive the Holy Spirit that gives you faith. The Holy Spirit gives you faith. But faith in what? Specifically, faith in Jesus Christ as your savior. Why is that important? Well, we're sinful people, and we need to be forgiven. It is in Jesus Christ that we are forgiven of our sins. Now, there's another important gift that you guys receive in the waters of baptism. Now, Harrison, what family are you part of? Your family, and what is your family called? A family. All right. Let's try this again. What family are you part of? The Roberts Roberts family. You were born into the Roberts family, and you're part of the George family. Oh, Davidson. Right. Davidson. And you're part of the Perno. Bavaro. Both of you. Oh, we got a Davidson again. And you're part of the... The whole Lord's family. (laughs) You see, we have our earthly family that we have, names that go with it, but in one of the gifts in the waters of baptism is we are made part of the Lord's family. We're made as a child of God. That's important for us to remember. So let's fold our hands and let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, 
We thank you for these gifts that you have given to us through the waters of baptism, through your Holy Spirit, through your Son, Jesus Christ, making us part of your family and calling us to faith. May this be important for us each day of our lives, and we, may we make good use of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, last week I talked about the administration of God's grace. One of the main points from the sermon was the fact that God has set up a system for his grace to be delivered to individuals. Now, most things in our world work in some, sor some form of system. We can use a car as an illustration for this. Uh, the majority of us, I believe, we drove to church today. Yeah, either had to do one of two things, take a key and put it into the ignition and turn it on, or maybe you've got one of those cars that's got a push button if you got your key in your pocket, a key fob, or maybe you've got an electric car, but either way, you're gonna have to have something that gives you permission for that car to start. Now, you don't have to know everything about how a car works to be able to drive it. But every driver knows that there's one thing you have to have. You have to have fuel in the tank, or if you have an electric car, a charge in the battery, to be able to operate the car. Engineers have made a system to move energy from one location to the engine, to then the transmission and the wheels to put the car into motion. God has set up and established a system to move or transfer his grace from himself, his son, the Holy Spirit, to his people. And I use the phrase word and sacrament ministry with baptism being one of those sacraments. Today, we're gonna to take a look at or explore what it means to be baptized into Christ Jesus. Now that's in the Romans text, but I think it's helpful for us to begin with our gospel reading in Matthew chapter three, where it says in verse 13 that Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River to John to be baptized by him. The ministry of John the Baptist was a ministry of preaching, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And that's part of our understanding of baptism. Repentance and forgiveness are components of baptism. But in this account, we have Jesus, the sinless Son of God, coming to be baptized. He doesn't have any sin to repent. There are no sins to be forgiven. Yet, he comes to the waters to be baptized. Now, John understood his own need for baptism, that he received the gifts that only Jesus can provide, and he recognized Jesus. And John said to Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, but you come to me? It seems as if the situation is backwards. When we go over this in confirmation class, it's not unusual that one of the students will pick up on this and ask the question, why does Jesus need to be baptized if he's the sinless son of God? This doesn't make any sense. So Jesus responded to John, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. This is important. You see, Jesus is fulfilling the plan of salvation. He is bringing God's righteousness to sinful people. This is part of the step of establishing this system, this system of administration of God's grace. In addition to that, fulfilling these Old Testament prophecies and making sure that 
uh, all righteousness is being fulfilled, and Jesus is the one that brings that righteousness. This is one of those places that we see the Trinity. Here, we see the Trinity in action and distinguished. The heavens open, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove and rests upon Jesus, and God the Father spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the fullness of the Trinity in action. And this is God's plan. He is clearly identifying Jesus as the Messiah. And the time is right for his ministry to begin. His ministry is to bring healing to people and to bring teaching and clarification. That's part of the three years. But then the ministry is that he's got to go to the cross. He's got to go through the cross and through the grave and through the resurrection to new life for us. Now, it can be very sad to go through Holy Week where we see all of this stuff transpire that uh, Jesus is rejected and arrested and crucified. But we all love Easter, don't we? Easter's a great celebration, celebration of new life. But you've noticed in this, Jesus didn't need to be baptized, not as we do. Here, Jesus is identifying with the sin and the failure of people, and he's taking it upon himself. You could say, he is being our substitute. I think that's an important thing, especially as we move forward into Romans chapter 6. So let's, let's do that. Let's move on to Romans 6. Now, sometimes people get the idea in mind that because they are baptized, they can then do whatever they want. I don't know if you've ever had a conversation with somebody that has that idea, but they may say something like, they are forgiven, so they are good, now they can go and do what they want. Hmm. And if you have a discussion with them, they will rationalize that all I have to do is simply repent, and I'm forgiven again anyway. Sometimes this is called cheap grace. Maybe you've heard of that phrase. What does it even mean for cheap grace? It's this idea that we don't take it seriously what Christ has done for us. So then we think we can just kind of go and do whatever. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue to sin that grace may abound by no means. And that's an important phrase right there, by no means. And you see, somebody, even back at the time of the Apostle Paul, had this idea, this rationalization, that the more you sin, the more abundant God's grace becomes. So if we want God to be even more gracious, that means we should sin all the more. Sin boldly. You like that one? Oh, oh boy. Let's just go and do bad things so that God can be more gracious with us. No, I don't, I don't think that's what God desires. The Apostle Paul isn't having any of this. There is no cheap grace for the Apostle Paul. It is true that grace is a gift, but it is not free. It may be free for us, but somebody had to pay the price. And that somebody is Jesus Christ. He went to the cross. He made the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate payment, so that we could be forgiven. The grace of God is available, but it came at a great cost. And we should always remember this. The Apostle Paul continues in verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? You see, in the waters of baptism, you become connected to Jesus. 
You're united with him. This baptized into his death. Now just for a little bit more clarification, verse 4. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. You know, this isn't just some human ritual or some ceremony. This is to be connected to Jesus with a purpose. And the purpose is so that we might walk in newness of life. That's part of what it means to be baptized into Christ Jesus, this walking in newness of life. Now, I've had people say, but, but the sin's all the fun stuff. Yeah? But, but can't we continue to do, well, I'm not going to get into all of that. If the only fun stuff is the sinful stuff, maybe we need to talk about really what does God desire for us in our life? Because I think God desires for us to live a full life that has many great things for us to enjoy. In verse 5, it says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Resurrection. Easter. You guys all love Easter, right? We're a long way from Easter. We just got done with Christmas, and here I'm jumping to the next big festival. Well, it's because this is the essence of our Christian faith. It begins in Jesus Christ, and it is fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and he is the one that gives us new life so that we can have great joy in our life. We often talk about the great exchange as something that takes place with all of the activity around Holy Week. And I mentioned earlier that Holy Week can be kind of a, a sad time. As we journey through the arrest and the crucifixion of Jesus, especially Jesus on the cross on Good Friday, we will think about the great exchange. We give to him our sins and we receive his righteousness. But we can likewise talk about this same great exchange in baptism that we are united with Jesus. Jesus puts in his righteousness into the water and he takes out our sin. We come to the waters of baptism and we put in our sin and we receive out his righteousness. This is a holy system set up by God for our spiritual and our eternal well-being. You could say Jesus is the one that is putting the fuel in the tank, the charge in the battery, the Holy Spirit to us, putting the fire, the spiritual fire into our hearts. The text continues in verse 6. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. Remember the opening illustration with the car? Got to have the right key. Faith in Jesus Christ. That Holy Spirit. The fuel in the tank. And God has us put that Christian life into action. God has set up a system to get his grace to you individually. Baptism, you could say, is a conduit or a means to get you connected to Jesus. Now, if you're one that understands cars, you maybe you could think of baptism as like the fuel line. The fuel line, it gets the fuel to you. 
He takes sin away through his death and he gives you new life through his resurrection. But there's one thing in here that you might, maybe you caught this. It said, so that you would be set free from sin, you would no longer be enslaved to sin. You guys ever struggle with sin? You know there's things that you shouldn't do and you still do it. Sometimes we do things, well, we can be a little bit foolish. Maybe you guys notice I kind of got a big mark on the side of my head. You guys notice that? This is one of those stupid things. I was tempted to say, I made my wife mad so she hit me upside the head with a board. But that would be a lie. The reality is, I lost control of a board and I literally hit myself in the head with a board. Oh, sometimes we do dumb things. But I think part of the point that the Apostle Paul is making is there isn't room for us to know something is wrong and then we intentionally go down that road just trusting that God is going to forgive us. But there's always grace. Because we are sinful people, we need that grace. We come to him. He forgives us. That's the blessing that Jesus has for us. He takes our sin away and he gives us his righteousness. And it's imperative for us to remember that Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and with fire that gives you the power for the Christian life. This is important for us to be able to walk in newness of life. Because if you're not connected to the power, well, now you're all on your own. And you know where that ends up. Well, sometimes we get hit upside the head with a board, right? By our own doing. We'll pick up with this next week as we explore baptism and fellowship and what does this mean for us in our relationships with one another in the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and we'll confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord calls to all to repent of our sins and to put our faith in Christ. Merciful God, we confess that we have ignored your gracious call to life and salvation and have not been aware of our need for you. We come to you now, therefore, pleading your forgiveness, your strength, and your help. As we say, speak for your servant hears. Lead and guide us in the ways of your commands and restore to us life for the sake of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have been redeemed from the old life of sin by our baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, may be renewed by your Holy Spirit to live in righteousness and true holiness. And, O oh God, by the patient suffering of your only begotten Son, you have beaten down the pride of the old enemy. Now help us, we humbly pray, rightly to treasure in our hearts all that our Lord has of his goodness, born for our sake, that following his blessed example, we may bear with patience all that is adverse to us. Lead us and guide us by your word. May we hold your law in front of ourselves so that we can reflect upon our lives and know those things that we should and should not do. But also hold that grace in Jesus Christ before ourselves so that we know how much you love us. Lead us and guide us each day. Help us, Lord, in making good decisions that we can shine the light of Christ, not only have it shine into our hearts, but we can shine it into the hearts of others. And Lord, we lift up to you those that we have on our health concern list, and we ask you to bring them comfort and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we continue to pray for the situation in the Middle East, we ask you to keep those that are serving in a deployed status in our military in that area, that you would keep them safe. And we especially ask you to work in the hearts and the minds of the leaders of countries to find a way that they can come to terms of peace or some way that they can bring better safety and security to that area so many tragedies that take place all the time. We lift them all up to you, Lord, that you know the needs of people, and we pray that you would work in a mighty way to bring help and support to those that are in need. We pray all of this and whatever else is on our hearts as we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God of peace, may he make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen, for he who calls you is faithful. Amen. <laughs>